Hi, this is Chris Heinz, Director of Customer Experience here at Britannica Education. Wanted to do a quick tutorial of what you can expect to see in the Britannica Library platform within the next couple weeks. So join me as I take you through the platform to show you some of the upcoming changes that you can expect to see in Britannica Library. So we do have some updates coming to the young children, the children, and the young adults level of Britannica Library. The first area that I'll show you is the young children section. Now this is really built for younger learners. It has an interface that is not so text heavy, has simple low lexile articles for younger students that are working on their emerging reading skill. And the biggest change you'll notice is the introduction of an English Spanish toggle at the top of all of the young children articles. This allows for seamless translation between English and Spanish and can be a really powerful tool for multilingual users of Britannica Library. Next up, I want to share some changes you'll see at the children and the young adults levels. At both of these levels, the homepage view and user experience is not going to change drastically. However, you will see a new interactives browse feature. So our editorial team has been hard at work to create new interactive features that are embedded in line in articles, but also stand alone within this browse. So some of the interactive features are interactive slideshows, timelines, maps, uh, quizzes. There's lots of really good stuff built in here to build engagement with Britannica library content. Users will also see an updated, refreshed look at the article browse and search pages. So all of this has really been modernized to appeal to younger learners using Britannica Library. But the biggest, and in my opinion, most exciting change comes with the articles themselves. So articles in Britannica Library have been redesigned, and our editorial team has worked to make this information easier for students to access. So at the top of the page, we see a gallery view of all of the image and media content that is contained within that article, allows for easy browse and students can use the jump to article to see where that content is housed in line in the articles themselves. Then as we scroll down the page, you can see that the content is sectioned and each section is closed, which allows for users to not be confronted with a large wall of text, makes the articles a little bit more accessible and easier to digest for reading. We've also incorporated bulleted lists to summarize information, as well as did you know features, fun facts, and other things to drive engagement with the content that users are reading. And finally, on the left side of the page, you may have noticed this tool that we refer to as the Navigator. So this tool has all of our accessibility and navigation tools built in. This is where users can adjust the reading level between the children, the young adult, and the reference center levels. They can cite content, they can save it to a My Britannica account, or share content with colleagues and other users. They can also access a new open dyslexic font. So if I click on this icon here, you'll see all of this has been changed into a font that's easier for dyslexic students to process. Thanks for joining me on this quick tour of Britannica Library. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or feedback, please feel free to reach out to our team and we'll do our best to support you.